here we have iPad set there on the floor and this. And normally this would be up on a music stand and it can be anywhere in the house. It doesn't have to be sat next to this thing, but I can show you. As I'm flicking through, that's changing presets down here. And the big idea that I'm trying to get to is making a Helix rig that uses the floor as the main driver but only for MIDI. And what I'm then doing is sticking all these things in here. You can see the rev come on, go off, that purple thing, Prince of Tone, come on and go off. So if I'm downstairs or somewhere else hitting these buttons activate stuff and as I'm doing research on these what I'm really trying to do is find a work method that lets me leave little trails for me or you know show other people how to do that so I set up that button do I have double click it boom comes up with YouTube and a playlist of all the research I'm doing. If you see on my YouTube, it's sort of like a desk, one, you know, it's kind of like my desk, I guess, full of stuff, but it's all organized into playlists. So when somebody asks me something or makes a point in one of the groups that I'm doing, being it the Iridium group or the Plethora group or the Midi Mad Scientist group or the Waza Air group, I've got all this stuff right there to hand. And I've got to go through publicity, but come on, you stupid thing. What's up, Helix users? There is something serious. So there's your boy Steve. Regarding the 3.0 update that I did not see coming, blown away, shot, surprised, did not expect. Sorry, Steve. Make you quiet there for a sec. So the idea is, in in learning, all this stuff is incorporated. You go through. Learn the horizons. Skip back to on song. That actually links back pretty well. And get an actual visual of the horizon there without having to go out and necessarily buy that. But I kind of look at this thing as a sort of mega shopping trip or a way to alleviate gas and stuff like that. So King of Tone, Iridium. This thing is a Mutron, and this is already working from here over to the thingy there. Maybe it's not now, but the idea is the same. It's kind of to look at the entire way the Helix works because when they're going through and modeling these things, they'll tend to, to keep the model shorter if you're always going on a downwards driven Mutron 3, you know, as a filter. Double clicking that will change it on here, but that's in the Helix, changing completely from one model to the next. I'm actually changing DSP blocks. And this really drives it into your head. Same thing here with the Mutron. Move these little notes. So if you look at the King of Tone, this in the Helix is mapped as two Prince of Tones, or Heir Apparents, if you will. And right now it's set to go on and off, and that works great. You can see it here, you can see down there. So turn off the first turn. Turn on the second one. So that all works and that's dead easy. That takes like two seconds to do if you're just doing it on and off. Because all I'm doing is emulating the foot switch down there on the big helix. It's cool because if I'm sat here strumming or from over there strumming or from downstairs strumming and monitoring the earphones, you can hear those differences and you're training yourself by ear, not so much by 
touch. So you've got everything right there in front of you. But I think this really could accelerate the way we learn stuff. Plus it's, you know, really cool. If you pass on to Yonder Boy here, the Iridium, this one I've already mapped in a different preset. So instead of redoing all that work, I can just double click on the Iridium and it should jump over to one of these things that's already mapped. So that this iPad and this OnSong in essence becomes a searchable, filterable, clickable, do anything MIDI controller. And in the same way I'm bouncing around on the MC6, and creating menu structures there, you can do that here. And, and that really brings up the extra thought. When you're combining the stomp over there, which has a command center, and this thing that has a command center, and floor pedals that have command centers, and extra floor pedals that, they're all bits and pieces of one massive brain, and you can store stuff where you want, where it makes most sense. You know, strategically, it helps you think and prepare your rig for any any number of events like you know what happens if my stomp dies completely am i out of the water no i've still got the plethora which is doing all of the modulation delays reverbs all that kind of good stuff still got an iridium down there which is doing three amps so you're losing some of the automation but you'll survive anyway and that's my whole big push for this thing, keeping it constantly dusted. Get, you know, an actual visual clue as to what's in there. This, this King of Tone, this is all 2.8 stuff, but, you know, from what I'm understanding, that is an amazing drive, and I who know nothing about drives. I just run amps and loads of modulation and stuff like that, but it's good to, to break into new grounds. And seeing this thing, is beyond fascinating. I mean, you've got stuff from everybody, John Cordy, for example. He made this great John Mayer tone thing with the Qtron, which is based on the same Muteron. Uh -huh. So um, basically it kind of drives the Qtron a little bit more, so you're kind of having to do a bit less to get it to do Yeah, which is all well and lovely. But then another thing you could do is chuck a blues breaker or a TS10 app. So while I'm sat here, with the HX stomp, I have to be a bit running through bit YouTube, selective. dumping all these um, things in. Obviously on John Mayer's normal board, he has things. This Onslaught thing is doing is it's creating like a big massive database that organizes all your research for you and presents it there and you can link and click it to the actual pedal and understanding the pedal and going back through the manuals and seeing all this stuff kicks you into high gear and you now know if you're like me you know who the hell's even seen a Mutron if you haven't seen it on YouTube or something like that the chances of you running into this is going to be pretty impossible and finding one oof, 700 bucks worth of super pedal there from the 70s. So this stuff is just fascinating. As far as I'm concerned. And while it's a big project and tedious would be the word at first. If you think of this thing as a snapshot holder, like a folder of snapshots. What you can do with this by just tapping on the screen and then moving an expression pedal, it's ideal for a guitarist because you're not here like you would be in other emulators. There's all kinds, bias effects and all that stuff, which do this kind of level of graphics and are interactive fully. But for me, the, there's a difference in sound between bias effects, which I ran for years, and the Helix. And there's a difference in tactile touch you know to go and click on stuff have lights coming up why is that so blurry come on thing there's a massive difference between hands-on touchiness oh, I can turn on the light 
Isn't that nice? You know, even going through and, and manipulating these things where you're changing views, you can do all that remotely, no problem. All these things here on the diesel, which you're going through, you're going to be flipping and snipping. The transistor tape, for example, you know, it's nine, nine different things to look at. And that's why I put it on these things. Have a look, where was it? Tapes. RE201. Bugger, where is it? Anyway, it's in there somewhere. Do 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 road and space echo. You look through these, I mean that's your whole history of the old delays that are all in the legacy gear, whatever that was called, DM4 or something or the other. That's the boss modern version of what was the actual 201. And this for me, I put a lot of thought into these things. This is what I'm really interested in. For me, Helix, love it as you must, you wrap it in stuff, it's a box. It's a tiny little screen. You don't have access to it. You can open up HX Edit, but it's a stylized functional thing to manipulate the data. Whereas something like this, an overlay on top, you can click these and activate the heads. You could bring up user manuals and stuff, you can see exactly how it was written, the whole style of it. And you can then combine these things, bloody hell, into these massive rotisserie presets. And what I do with this, this here thing, is I've got the floor here doing all the drives and setting up the first DSPs worth of stuff. I've got a second line of DSPs, so now eight blocks there. And then I've got another five blocks in the loop of this. And if we want to go an extreme even further, I've got Neurium in the loop of that. So three amps into five effects and that loop can be swapped up and down there all you want in the loop of the old stomp I'm getting tired now as you can see that links into the variax so that brings up for me when I'm creating this stuff I don't want to have to go and look through and reach down and touch I want to see what I'm doing and here I've got all the the resonator banks Hooked up one time. Nah. So it's all coming together slowly. I mean, slowly, slowly, slowly. This is the other idea. Take reality and then combine other stuff that just makes no sense. Like this is a boat switch thing. And that is now controlling the knobs and switches which you don't see there which to me is pretty cool. And it's the same process all around. So these can be your three snapshots. Those can be another three fake snapshots or your on off switch, maximum mims. For me, what this is doing, this is sort of digging into the benefits of the whole dark horse preset spillover thing. If you're driving a dual DSP Helix, you can switch that on. And you've got seven folders times 128 presets worth of stuff that you can stick in there. So you can turn your Helix into a motor for creating tones, for creating snapshots, and then pare those down. You can pick, copy, and paste them from this big stack of sounds. Pick the sound you want and paste that into a new preset and shrink it down. And you can even throw it on there. So. 
You're talking craziness with these rotisserie presets, but essentially the whole idea that you don't have enough DSP is, is crazy. The, the Helix was born to be the glue that holds everything together in a massive rig. So if you have real amps, if you have fake amps, if you have real you know, reverbs, if you have actual tape players and decks and stuff like this, you can represent all of this stuff right on screen and include the history of it and include, you know, the designs under there and stylize it and whack away at buttons there and go and see a documentary on it or your boy John. And then you can link back into the Helix to his presets, which you should check out because they're pretty good. So, end of mass data dump. I'm tired now. But that's what's been going on. So if you're seeing a lack of me online, don't worry, I'm, I'm keeping really busy here.